Hello, everybody. Thank Hello. you. It's very nice to see so many of you here to listen to this conversation. I wanted to begin with a, kind of a general question for you, Isabel. Something that I've thought for a long time while following your career is that if someone needed to find what was interesting in contemporary cinema and didn't really know where to start, one could simply follow you. I mean, you work with some of the masters of the form, Michael Haneke, Catherine Breillat, Paul Verhoeven coming up, um, but you're also very adventurous in your choices of younger filmmakers, uh, young French filmmakers like Serge Bozon or Mia Hansen Love, whose film L'Avenir uh, has just been presented at Berlin, uh, but also foreign filmmakers, and not only American. Um, you've worked with the Korean director Hong Sang Su, Filipino director Brillante Mendoza. So I'd like to simply start by asking you, what do you look for in a film? What is it that you identify and that you go after? Uh, I look for uh, a good director <laughs> in the first place. Uh, that's why I want to, I, I like to extend my my space of investigation and I don't like to lock myself in my own country because the, the more you push the borders and you m better chances you get to you know to to fight grand people and that was always my idea of, of cinema you know to to push as far as I could you know the the possible territories where to find great people and and also for me the the cinema was always connected in a way to to the idea of traveling, you know, because I mean, when you do a film, it's a way of in traveling in yourself in an inner kind of uh, trip. But uh, I like when this uh, idea of, of traveling is, is in as a double significance, you know, and so it, you travel in yourself, but you also travel in the, in the first sense of the word. Uh, that was always my idea, and that's what I did ever since I started, you know. I, w I, I like to explore new territories. And obviously, when you see a film by a new director that, that captivates you, there's something that you are going to bring to that filmmaker, which is your skill and your talent as a great actress. Um, what do you think that that artist can bring to you at this point? I mean, yesterday I think I looked at your French IMDb, Allociné, and it said you'd been in 128 films. I, probably by today it's 130. They lie. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what concretely, what can you, what can they bring you at this point? What are you looking for? Well, I've, I'm looking for, um, um, I'm looking for a, a great relationship. I mean, the, 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 the relationship between an actor and a director is something quite unique, I think. Uh, quite and in my life and your my life is full of these n um, numerous countless uh, encounters with great directors and uh, it's a, it's really an extraordinary sort of uh, relationship made of attraction desire protection I mean it's so many things and yet with a distance I mean it's not somebody that you live with it's some, somebody but it's 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 a really very strong a kind of uh, relation and I think that's in a way that's what I look for and eventually of course hope, hoping that it will lead to a great film and uh, but I like the quality of of, of moments and life uh, I'm going to spend with them f in the first place. Speaking of relationships I think many people are aware that one of the great relationships of your career was with Claude Chabrol. Mm -hmm. uh, you made seven films with him, is that I right? I made uh, six or seven. Yeah, th quite seven. a few. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about what that relationship was like? What was it about Chabrol and you that, that functioned so well? Well, I think that, first of all, it's always very uh, reassuring and very fulfilling to, 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 um, to shoot uh, several films with a director. When you, when, when you shoot one film with a director, you always are wonder why he doesn't ask you to shoot another one and then another one. It's always <laughs> a little bit frustrating when he goes to another actress. I think they should always do films with me, but it does not always ap happen always. But anyway, if with Chabrol, that was a good news. It happened almost all the time. I think what, from the very, very beginning we worked together, from Violette Nozier, what was very clear that 
Chabron never did a, a, a idealized uh, cinema. He never tried to idealize his um, characters. He, he liked to film people just the way they are, uh, at um, hate of, of uh, as, as human beings, not as uh, romantic characters or heroines or, or and whatever conflicts or fights their characters have to go through. It's more the fights they have to go through in, in uh, within a given political or sociological situation. So, and I like this kind of honesty towards a character. So you can't say that a character is bad or good, but you just can say that if he's bad, the situation around the character is better. It's a very political view of mankind in a way. And I think when the first place, when I did uh, Violette Nozier with him, it's not that he, legitim he, m he made her act legitimate because she killed her parents, so that's not very nice. But, of course, <laughs> but you know, he, he, he tried to, to, you know, to, to um, take that fact out of it, I mean, in, in, in a given context and not to give an explanation, but, you know, to make it as honest as possible. And I think that was really the, the, the print, the, the input of our collaboration since the very beginning. And then even in Story of Women, um, the character, um, you know, she, she, she makes abortions, and, but she's, she's not a very nice woman, you know, she's very cynical, she likes to make money, she cheats on her husband, I mean, nothing really nice, and she, 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 but without knowing, she does an act of resistance, and only when she's about to die, she's going to realize that, of course, she's an heroine, but only at, the, at this moment, you know. So he has always this view of characters, which I think is very close from what I think about my characters, never trying to idealize them, just to show them as, not even human, as accurate as possible. That's more my obsession, you know. So I think our relationship was really um, made out of that, I think. I was surprised I, in rereading an interview with you about Chabrol, you mentioned that he never said anything to you on set and that you liked that. So that leads me to ask you, uh, in more practical terms, what do you want from a director? I understand that you want an exchange, you want to make a great film, but in practical terms, what does the director bring you? What do you need from the director to do your job? Well, I think I want from them what all actors in the world want from a director, which is the, the right uh, staging. And the, the right staging fits exactly... I, I think I wait for him to answer my questions through his staging, not verbally, not with explanations which are useless most of the time, but the, the staging gives you the right answer, the, the right distance of the camera, the camera movement, following your inner movement of a career. I mean, the, the actor is very sensitive to that, and if the director gives that to you, that's the essential, you know? So we don't need to... to, to because the cinema is a very a, a practical practice, you know, and you feel the things by doing it, you know, you don't, it's not something that you have to explain before, um, it's really the celebration of the present moment, and to make that happen, in order to make that happen in the best possible way, it, the, the camera has to be right, the camera movement has to be right, the camera distance has to be right, and that's what direction is, is. so that's what I require from him, nothing much, but nothing less, and that's enormous, you know. So that leads me to a question that perhaps may be naive, but is your performance different if you're in a film where there's a lot of panning or a lot of tracking or a lot of still shots? And if so, do you initially discuss the mise-en-scene, the staging with the director, or is it something that you feel as you go along and that kind of adjusts what you're doing? Oh, no, I never, I don't discuss, but of course each film has its own... Uh, um, um, organic movement, you know, of, I, mean, I mean, if you, if, if you take, you know, I did a movie with Brillante Mendoza, for example, I was playing this uh, um, um, kidnapped woman and, and the situation were um, amazingly physical. I mean, I really went through something I'd never been through before in my life. It was just an amazing uh, set and it was really extraordinary. So it was, the, the character was mainly defined by his physicality nothing else and it was only about tininess and what you can imagine a hostage can go through and so the movie was really trying to capture this. I'm taking it as an example because it's obviously 
very different from the way Michael Haneke would film with very still shots, you know. So his film has his own organic movement, you know, but uh, within each, uh, the, 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 the um, uh, let's say, the, the frame of each film, um, you know, you, I don't require anything specific. It just that within that frame, the movements are just uh, right. But I never discuss with, no, I don't have to do that. I don't think so. No, I, I don't think, I can't think of myself think, uh, saying, Mikael, I, okay, I think you should put your camera this way, not this way. I'd, maybe I'll try next time, but <laughs> no, I don't think so. It seems hard to imagine. Yes, so Claude Chabot had this very funny line about uh, uh, um, what he thought mise-en-scene was, you know, because when we were shooting Violet Nausea, the, the, the setting was very, very small. We were shooting in a tiny little small apartment um, in one of these buildings in Paris. And the set was very small. And he said, it's easy, it's so small, there was only one possible place to put the camera, so you don't have to think much about it. Which I think was a very accurate statement about uh, mise-en-scene, because most of the time, actually, that's the you have one good place, you know, and that's the one that you have to look for. But not so many possible places in terms of what the, the scene is supposed to mean, what kind of movement you want to, you know, uh, put in the scene. So now I'd like to turn to Valley of Love, which is the film that you're showing here, directed by Guillaume Niclou, and where you're reunited with Gérard Depardieu, who you famously acted with uh, over 30 years ago in Loulou, a great film directed by Maurice Piala. So I'll come back to my original question. Um, what was it about Valley of Love that drew you? Well, I had made uh, uh, another film with Guillaume Niclou, The Nun, uh, uh, after Diderot's uh, book. And um, I liked um, the way he was working from the very beginning because um, he has something very rough in his manner, very dry, which I liked, um, especially in that classical film in costumes, you know, one would expect or even fear that the movie was going to be so, too soft or too classical, but I liked his manner as a director. I'd never worked with him before. And I, as we were um, doing the film and finishing the film, he talked to me about this project of having a, cu a couple lost in the desert. I had been to um, the Death Valley myself some time ago, uh, and I thought that the mere idea to, you know, set a, a couple in this um, very special place, actually. I, don't, I mean, if any one of you have been to the Death Valley, it's really very special. Not only it's the heat is just um, unconceivable and the, the landscape. So I thought that um, there's the, the chemistry would immediately be interesting, you know, to put um, two people in this uh, situation. And uh, then I read the script and then I thought the script was marvelous. The dialogues were great and, and um, there was something so natural in, in, in those things. I mean, the situation, of course, is uh, really interesting. And I thought that, I don't know, you, one could feel when you read the script that the movie could be interpreted in many, many ways, which I think is always a, a great quality for a film. Uh, it, you can't, I'm, I'm sure, you know, it's the case for any great film, but each individual can have a different reading from the film, spiritual, mystical, um, or you can also think that the, the movie is about a great manipulation, you know, a great metaphor about cinema where the director of the, the son is really the director, you know, the one who pulls the strings. So I think you can I interpret the film in many in interesting ways. Now, in the film, you play a character called Isabelle, who's an actress. G Gérard Depardieu plays a character called Gérard, who's an actor, and Niclou has said that there are some things in the film that are perhaps inspired from his actors' lives. Are you playing yourself? Does it mean anything different to play yourself than to play uh, a, a judge or a woman who killed her parents? D does this mean anything to say that? Well, it doesn't mean anything because first of all, I, have, I think maybe I'm wrong, but it's... it's um, it really shows the power of illusion in, in cinema because I realized some time ago that I'm not sure that at any time in the script I am named Isabel. 
So I think I call Gérard, Gérard at the end, of course, uh, you have this couple asking for an autograph to Gérard, but I'm not sure, I think, I, I don't, I can't think of any scene where he calls me Isabel, so I don't know why people, everybody thought I was Isabel, because I'm not named as being Isabel in the film, and I can say that I'm not more Isabel in that film than in another film, because I'm also Isabel in other films. It's, it's just my name who changed, but I'm still me with my eyes and my hair and my face, so I'm still Isabel, and you know what I mean? So it doesn't really affect anything, actually. And I've been Isabel before in uh, Every Man for Himself with Godard, um, in uh, Louder Than Bombs, I was already, I was twice Isabel this year, and um, it doesn't change anything, because it's, 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 any, it's a fiction, anyway. And even if I, if I am uh, anyone else in a film, I'm still myself, too, you know, so. Uh, I think it changed for people because it, it blurs the boundaries between fiction and non-fiction, and, uh, and, 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 and I think it, it um, underlines this, uh, not obsession, people are, are always trying when they watch a film to, they, they, there is a mystery around an actor, you know, they want to think, they think is it him, is it not him, what is, a composition, what is his, so there is always an in, intrigue about this, you know. So if um, by any chance my character is named after me, people are almost reassured, they say, oh, it's really her, you know, it's not someone else, it's really her, but it's never nor or less me or not me, you know, it's always, um, uh, I don't know. <laughs> One of the things that was very powerful about Valley of Love for me as someone who loves movies and has seen many movies and has seen you and Gérard Depardieu in Lulu by Piala many times was to see the two of you as a quote unquote mythical couple brought back together really made me reflect on my own existence and passage through time to see the two of you after quite many years. So I just want to ask you, I suppose in, in a general manner, what it was like to find yourself in front of the camera with Gérard Depardieu again after all this time, and, and whether your history in cinema was at all relevant in making this film? By no mean, no. It was just, you know, uh, I mean, I think it's really a, a spectator's perception, you know, to think that, oh, they've been together before in a, in a previous film some time ago, and uh, I mean, but for us, it's uh, it just I, I was just doing one more film with Gérard, and that's it. You know, I was not thinking, oh my God, it's been so much time since last time we did the film. You know, and he's not just an actor with whom I have a a great um, relationship as an actress. I think we are really in tune together, and we play well. I mean, play well. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> well, let's say yes, but no. <laughs> I'm I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, we. Uh, we are, it, it's easy, you know, it's, voila, no, we don't talk much up before, we don't talk much after, it's just, we just do it, and uh, it, it was not a f an emotional phenomenon for us uh, to, to play together just because we did another film years ago, you know, it was, uh, I, I don't know, it's, it did not affect in one sense or the other my, my, my work or my pleasure or to do the film. It was just, yeah, I was just very happy to make another film with him, and I think he was happy to make another film with me. And actually, I didn't realize how much mythical was this couple, you know. It was not really an obsession for me, you know, over these years. I said, oh, I was such a mythical couple with Gérard in Lulu. Uh, for me, it was not a major event, you know, so <laughs> it, I can't say that. And we are going to do our next film together with Gérard. I yeah. saw that. You're going to make a film with Serge with Bozon Serge again. Yes, with whom I did Tip Top, yes. Mm -hmm. That's very exciting. Yeah. It, it's called Mrs. Hyde. Is that related to Jekyll and Hyde, or can you say anything yes, about it? Yes, it? uh, uh, it's Mrs. Uh, it's Dr. Jekyll, and so, but it's Mrs. And I'm not a doctor. <laughs> so on, on that taboo, perhaps uh, we'll open up the floor for questions from the audience. I, I see a question right in front of me. Please wait for the microphone. There'll be a microphone, and you can ask into the mic. I really loved Valley of Love, and I thought you were wonderful in it, but what was it like shooting in Death Valley? Hot. I mean, you, you never seem to be sweating. No, 
that's <laughs> <laughs> that's my nature. Uh, no, uh, thank you. But <laughs> um, no, I mean, I think you know the we all know that the the human nature can really you know um, get used to any extreme situations, and so that's what happened. You know, we, I mean, it was really hot. It was. It, it's it's uh, it's very strange because it's hot and it's it never cools never you think at night it's gonna and uh, never it's uh, it's always the same you know so it's a bit strange because you can't see you know what you usually you know see most of the time you know sense of night sense of day no it's equal you know 55 degrees all the time or 50 but um, but it was very inspiring actually you know so um, you could see the half empty bottle or, or the half full bottle but I saw the half full and it was so inspiring so um, so strange and so unusual and quite bearable in the end you know which we had it's, it was possible some people work there you know so but you were wearing pants and long sleeve shirts yes because <laughs> I, to get protection from the sun I was I would rather wear this than bathing suits <laughs> Let me tell you. Yeah. Well, if, uh, if, although I, I, I did. When I was watching, I kept thinking, "God, she must be dying in that outfit." No, 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 because it was light clothes, and um, it was fine. It was okay, but it was, um, yeah. Again, it's. Um, how c um, I think we we all really uh, felt, you know, the power and the strength of this place, and. Uh, we, it was not only inspiring, but it was also, it carried us in a way, you know, it was really part of, the, uh, I think our perf performances and our work would have not been the same without being literally uh, emerged in that situation. So we needed it, you know. So maybe we had to support it, I mean to support it. Uh, bear bear with it, it. To bear it. But in a way, it was also a help for us. You know, because that's how we created our characters, the story. It was really part of the of the um, adventure. Another question. I see a question in the second row on the end here. From what you were saying, do you want to direct films ever? If I want to direct film, no. <laughs> I'm too too lazy. Well, I don't know. Um, I don't know. It's a lot of work. And um, maybe out of curiosity, I will do it once, but it's a very expensive curiosity because, uh, you know, I mean, you can't launch yourself in such an adventure without being a little bit responsible, you know. But why? Yeah, maybe. But I'm fulfilled as an actress, and uh, I manage also to be quite responsible for what I do in a film. So I don't have any, you know, I can't say, I, I, there are certain things I want to say and that I can't say without being an actress. And the big question for me would be, if I direct, would I play or would I, wouldn't I play? So that would be really for me the, the, the imp I don't know, the, the big question, you know. And, uh, and I don't have the answer for the moment. Because maybe if I would direct and play in the film I would direct, yeah, maybe I could have a, a, be a bigger responsibility or control upon my own work than because that leads to me to another thought you know which is when you do a film um, let's say you have several films you have the official film from the script and you have s everybody does his uh, secret films you know when you do a film so you have the film of the director the film and and obviously I have my own film in my mind and when you see a film at the end, it's never your film, of course. You have to face the fact that it's not your film, it's not... And so it's always a little frustration and almost a little mourning, you know, of what you did, and you have to accept that you have to let this go, and it's not yours, it's someone else. You are, I uh, come a um, deposite... Um, dispossessed? Dispossessed of, of your own work, you know. So maybe if I would do my own film, then I could, you know, Keep my work for my, for me. I don't know. Another question. Uh, a third row, about two people in. Hi, Mr. Payer. Um, you had spoken earlier about the idea that when you're acting and when you're a character, you still are yourself. That regardless of what the name of the character might be, um, 
or who you're playing, you still maintain some aspect of yourself, which has always interested me in terms of acting. Do you have a specific process or way in which you can reconcile yourself with whatever character you're playing, whether it's a character that you may find is very close to yourself or something that might be more distant or more difficult, like in The Piano Teacher, for example? Oh, it's a very interesting question, actually, because, yes, I'm saying I, I'm myself, and sometimes I think, uh, because I could, um, I'm not so sure of what I say when I say that, you know, and, to, and I'm not so sure it's the ultimate purpose, finally. Maybe I erase all what I said before, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, sometimes I doubt, you know, about that, and I thought, because for years and for many, many times I say, I refuse the idea of, of a character. I just, I, I, I like to say that I, I, I play persons, persons, real persons, and I don't play a character, because for me the character is always something of a arbitrary shape, shape, you know, and the character is, you know, does not exist, it's a character. So I like this idea that I work on my own. Uh, but then having said that, sometimes, I don't know, the other day I woke up one morning and I said, maybe, I, maybe I'm wrong, maybe, maybe now I should try to, to do a character. I don't know how to put it, but um, I'm not so sure. Sometimes I'm not so sure of that, you know. I said, uh, maybe it's not enough just to think about being yourself. Um, I don't have the answer yet, I don't know, but um, uh, I don't know. Of course, because you are yourself, but of course you play a character uh, also, obviously. It's a fiction, it's not you. So maybe I thought you can go even further on that. I'm not so sure. I'm, I'm, I, I think it's nice to doubt also. So sometimes I'm not so sure of what I do <laughs> and if I do right. Another question? All the way in the back, uh, in the middle, standing. If you're willing to, could you please share uh, your approach on how you built a character in a specific role that you love to play, whether it was theater or film? And can you please tell us about uh, La Ceremonie and working with Sandrine Bonner and Claude Chabrol? Thank you. I'm sorry, because I'm not sure I got the first part of your question. Or Ah oui, okay, yes, okay. Um, well, I think in, a, in the first place, it might be a, a lazy answer, but it's w through v something very, very simple, which is the, the, the outside um, um, vision of the character, which means the costume, the, you know, that's, that's the first um, sign you give to an audience and to yourself too, you know, the, the way you are dressed, you are, it's very, it's, it's absolutely essential, you know, because that's, the first step to to a character and to maybe draw this limit or boundary between you and someone else, you know, because otherwise it would be always you and wouldn't be. So it it's the character, the way you're going to look, the hair, the that's very very important, you know, and that's also the great pleasure of being an actress because you you have this cap, let's say or capacity or possibility to transform yourself and to, it's like you wear a, uh, some, some body or an object around which you can turn, you know, 360 degrees and you have, you have different facets and different angles and uh, it's really something that you can play around endlessly and it's, it's a great pleasure. So that would be the first step. And then what's, what's interesting in a film is that you can say that you do things, but you are also being acted by what's going around you, you know, and that's very fascinating in films. There is an organic movement of, of the film that builds the character for yourself, so you, yeah, and you have to let that happen, and because the story is not being told only by you, the story is being told by so many elements around you. The scenery, the, the situation, the, the um, um, uh, how one scene goes after one scene, you know. It's, the, it's a whole movement who tells the story and who tells the character. So you have to let things happen, you know, and not necessarily play everything at, this, at the moment after moment, because the, 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 th the film does it for yourself. And as for the ceremony, um, initially Chabrol had, um, uh, had me to choose which character I wanted to play. 
but he knew that I was going to to pick up um, the post office uh, girl. That's why he had me to choose. He said, I knew that you were going to choose the other one. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, this one. And I, I picked her up because, yeah, she was talking all the time, like me now. <laughs> and um, I liked her. I mean, I liked her. She's not very likable, but I thought she was really interesting. And, and, and it was, she was more different from things I had done previously in previous roles. So I thought it was for me. And I like the Twingum twing scene in the post office, even though it was something I made up when we did the scene, you know. But uh, I knew that each scene was going to give me great potential of being very inventive, and I thought she was very funny also sometimes. Very dangerous, but very funny. Okay, I, a question right next to that gentleman. Hi, um, thank you for bringing so many different uh, women to life. I was wondering if there is a literary character that you would like to bring to life next that you haven't already, either on film or on stage. Uh, uh, well, I, have, I don't have, I, I don't think in terms of how to bring uh, life to a specific character or, well, let's say sometimes, yes, I can like a book or, um, but if it doesn't go with the vision of a director, it's hard for me to, just to have a you know um, a wish or a dream without having the vision of a of a of a director, and um, well yes in, in the theater more you know because the theater you have all these you know mythical characters like you if you if you are a stage actress or you may want to to play Chekhov or Moliere or Shakespeare uh, I've never played Chekhov myself for example and of course that's remains uh, a, a wish, you know, to, to play Chekhov. Right now I'm rehearsing a, a play in, in Paris about Phaedra, but it's not the classical Phaedra, it's a different Phaedra, but it's still Phaedra. So, um, um, in the theater, yes, you are, because you have more uh, well-known, the notion of character is much more um, there in the theater, you, are, you know. In, the, in, in movies, it's uh, it's you don't know you, the characters are not defined in advance. You know they're just uh, there when you read the script. So I don't have a specific idea in mind actually. Another question. I see someone right smack in the middle here. Uh, third row. Third row. I guess it was last year that my husband and I had the pleasure of seeing you in the maids um, with uh, Kate. Blanchette, and we loved it. And I just wanted to ask you how you felt about uh, being on the New York stage and acting totally in English. I've all, you know I've been watching you forever, and I've never seen you do anything you know completely in English. And I was, I was sort of like, wow. How do you, how do you how do you feel about that? Was that a difficult? challenging thing for you or did it come naturally or what was it uh, all about naturally not really <laughs> 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 it, it was challenging actually that's that's the second time i do it and i still don't know why i do it but i don't know maybe i'll do it a third time um i did it before in london i was mary stewart even though she's a french queen uh Originally, I mean, she was Scottish, but she was French, so they asked me to be Mary Stewart. And I did it for almost a year in London at the National Theatre in London, and that was already a hell of a difficult. And I did it again, and uh, because it's something to play in movies in English. I mean, when you play in, your, in English or in a different language, like, let's say I did a movie in Russian, for example, yeah. but when you play in you are almost a foreigner to yourself. I mean, it's a very different perception of yourself when you express yourself. I'm, I'm, even if I speak English, I mean, I'm not, it's not my, langu my language, you know. So it's not something, it's, it's interesting and something it gives you freedom, but something it doesn't, you know. It's, it's certainly a, a, um, a very rich but complex adventure. And rich, sometimes very enhancing and sometimes very difficult and very, you know, it's both. But maybe I will do it again. Plus, I was doing, that was speci special too, because I was doing a French play in English. So I said, <laughs> uh, okay. 
it's my author, <laughs> but it's their country. <laughs> so, you know, all mixed feelings about it. <coughs> Another question? I, I see a gentleman in the front row, in the middle. <laughs> Um, we were talking before about environments, you know, specifically the desert, but you've played in a lot of different environments, and I wanted to know a little bit about how working in different environments changed or affected uh, your performance. I guess if you didn't, you didn't get a chance to change environments to see how different it might be, but I think it would influence you in some way. And also, can you talk about some of the, it, since you've worked with so many directors, international and of all different backgrounds and all, which directors sort of inspired you or rather you learned something new by working with a you know, Korean director or working with certain Americans or what whatnot? Um, it's not only uh, yes the environment it's also the the you know it's the the place the people the locations uh, the people I think one of the most rich experience I had in this matter you know was I did a movie in Korea with Hong Song Soo the great director Hong Song Soo and uh, that was such a, spe a, a very special adventure uh, because he works in a very, very um, specific way, you know, and uh, there was no script. He chose the location first, and because he chose the location, then by very incidentally, we met each other, and I, I asked him, uh, what are you doing next? And he said, I don't know, I'll just find a nice hotel. I'm going to build up a story, and then after... 10 minutes, he said, but do you want to be in it? I said, yeah, why not? So he said, oh, okay, come. So <laughs> I went back to Paris because that happened in, in Seoul, in Korea, where we met. And then I went back to Paris and then three weeks later, I came back and we did the film, which is one of the most exquisite, I think, films I did. Um, so, but the whole thing was so, you know, I was only surrounded by Korean people and obviously I didn't have time to, re to learn how to speak Korean and this, they spoke very poor English, except for Hang Sung Soo himself. And I was literally lost in this little village at the seaside. Um, and the whole thing was completely um, unusual and so, but he's, su he's such a great director. So there was no script, he would give me the, the pages every morning. I had to learn the lines very quickly. And, um, but in terms of staging and direction, it was so precise and so nothing was improvised. I mean, he's really a great director. And I thought that's what the cinema, what I like about cinema is the versatility, you know? I mean, cinema is either seven months shooting with Michael Cimino in Heaven's Gate and having the most extraordinary experience in terms of time and, and, and in Man City. And it's nine days with Hong Song Soo in Korea. And that's, Cinema is this continent, you know, where you can, or, or for me, it's like almost a, 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 a matière, I don't know. A matter, a material. Ma that you can really, literally shape and extend, distort or reduce in any possible ways. And that's what I really like about, it. that's very, very exciting, you know, to think that cinema has this immense potential of being shot in many days with million dollars or, you know, or only nine days with, uh, not million dollars, uh, <laughs> very little Korean money, and I like that. You know, it's it's just for me. It's um, um, you know, I, I I think you can't reduce making films at on, on, on to one um, way. You know, it's so many ways to do it, and so many exciting ways, and uh, and certainly to go back to the Hong Song Soo experience. You know, my because. Uh, once he decided to have me in this location, in this r remote little resort at the seaside, about six hours drive from uh, Seoul, uh, then he built up that story, and that became the heart of his story, because the movie is called In Another Country, and he built up three little different stories, like three little short stories about uh, a foreigner being emerged in this different uh, culture and habits, and. Um, and he really built his story about me, you know, I mean, around my, uh, the presence of a foreign woman in this place. So that was really interesting. Another question? I see a gentleman in the middle here as well. Third row. I have a young nephew who's a uh, millennial, and I will go back in today and tell him I had a wonderful talk with a grand actress who's done 130 films. 
and he'll want to know your name, and I will give him your name, and he won't know who you are. And I will say to him, well, these are the five films you should watch by this great actress. So I want to know from you, what five films out of your hundred <laughs> shall I tell him to watch? How old is he? He is after 2000, Because all, not all my films are being uh, watchable by 21, children. 22. <laughs> I would tell him the piano he teacher. It's all right. I would, my films, I would, he's old enough to see the piano teacher. That's uh, for example, you know. Uh. I think my youngest son has not seen the uh, the piano teacher yet. Um, <laughs> what? Uh, well, yes. I, I didn't do many films for for children, but I would recommend Heaven's Gate, for example, warmly. Warmly as a great masterpiece and so much telling about his country. I would recommend, oh, I would recommend um, in another country, although, my, okay, he might be a little bit, um, um, I, uh, he's 25 years old. Oh, good, he can see all of my films. <laughs> <laughs> all of them. I want to know five. You don't have to answer if you don't want to. I don't want to choose, you know. I don't want to choose. I love them all. I think we have one, we have time for one more question from this. I see a lady up here in the fourth row. Fourth row. Thank you for being here. Um, the two films I'm thinking about is um, The Ceremony, I know my French, and White Material. Do you have any, um, Sounds like a crazy question, but personal slash political satisfaction in making a movie that challenges the the economic or colonial status quo, and those two movies stand. Uh, I like white material very much. Um, I think, in any, in a sense, all films are political in the great sense of the word political. You know, so um, uh, I don't think that they are strictly political, but of course they, they, they give a certain vision of the world and uh, they don't hesitate speaking about specifically um, white material, you know, to speak about, you know, um, something very specific between this white woman when the, the revolution happens in the country, even if it's an imaginary country. And Claire Denis really wanted to um, describe the point of view of someone who goes uh, in one minute from the, um, the power to the victim, but without, she, she didn't try to attempt to say this is bad or this is good. She just wanted to make people understanding why, for example, in this case of the, this woman was um, viscerally attracted and attached to this piece of land and why she wanted to stay there and uh, so, in a way, she really blew all the um, um, caricature and definitions of you know who is good and who is bad, and that's what you expect from film, you know, to make people think, and uh, and that's already very political, you know, when you make people think about, and when you s locate your story or your um, characters in some very specific and very loaded context, you know, that's very political. But it's not something that, you know, I ferociously seek in the morning, you know, I'm going to do a, film, a political film. No, each film brings up a vision, you know, and that's political in a way. Each, I mean, certain, let's say, great films bring up that vision. That's all we have time for today. Thank you very much to all of you, and especially to Isabelle Huppert.